Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports, where we cover Orioles and Ravens news. We're your host, Jared and TJ. And in this video, we'll be covering the Orioles versus Yankees series, the third time we've played the Yankees this year. Um, obviously, the first two times we beat them in those series, um, the first time being the four-game series here in, in late April, and then the second time being in New York um, in mid-June when um, we were in that midst of that ins insane stretch um, that we were playing the Braves, Phillies, you know, Astros, Rangers, all those teams, you know, and and uh, remember, I don't know if you remember, we put up 17 versus them last time, you know, but um, well, one of the bigger stories that come out of that series was, you know, the hit by pitch, you know, kind of like the little, I don't want to say beef, but like, you know, the kind of, you know, stir up, you know, that they kind of had in New York, you know, when, when it kind of started, when Juan Soto ran into, you know, Jordan Westbrook, who was playing third base, Jordan Westbrook had to come out of that game. I don't think he played until that weekend series versus the, the I want to say the Astros. Cause I think we went to Houston right after that. And, um, you know, it was definitely, um, you know, kind of the, the, the beginning of everything that kind of transpired afterwards, because then Albert Suarez, who didn't have control of that game whatsoever hits, you know, Aaron judge in the hand or in the arm, at least I think it was either the hand or the arm. Aaron judge had to come out of, come out of the game and then didn't play up, didn't play to the third game of the series. He missed the second game. Um, and then it kind of, you know, spir spiraled into, you know, game two of the series, you know, when Gunnar Henderson gets hit in the, in the, in the arm, you know, by Nestor Cortez, funny enough, that wind up being the game winning run, you know, that's how that Henderson scored, you know, so that kind of backfired on him, whether it was on purpose or not, I don't know. There wasn't any kind of beef in game three because we just kind of laid down pipe in that game. You know, we won 17 to five, you know, but. You know, I was I don't think that not many people were talking about it coming into the series here, you know. But after what happened in Game One, you know, the series, you know, with Brandon High and the benches clearing and everything, I think that kind of rekindled everything, because right. you know the game was fine going at, like from beginning to end. You know, the obviously the Orioles just got swept by the Cubs. You know, vibes are kind of low. You know, that's the second you know losing streak they've had in two weeks or whatever. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to see how this game is going to go. You know, and then. Like I said, the game was fine. I mean, we were losing four to one going to the ninth inning, and then Clay Holmes drills Kirsten Kearsett in the head, you know, and that was kind of, you know, kind of like a what the hell moment, you know, like that was random, you know, because, you know, Clay Holmes seems to have at least some sort of control, you know, he's got voted into the all star game, you know, so, you know, Kirsten down on the ground for a minute, you know, and then Hyde winds up coming out, but he's, he's chirping at Clay Holmes, you know, and, you know, it kind of seems like how all it was, you know, Hyde was mad as guy got hit in the head, you know, who wouldn't be, you know, like, you know, we're down like a lot of guys, you know, not only say a lot of guys, but, you know, we, we don't have time or room for players to get hurt like that, you know? So, and we're in the midst of, a, you know, a offensive low, you know, the, the, the pitching isn't, isn't doing that well, you know, it's just a really stressful time for the Orioles. And then, you know, I guess some people in the Yankees dugout are chirping back at him when he's walking back to the dugout. And then, you know, Brandon and I, you know, freaking barreling over there, you know, freaking, it was actually kind of funny, you know, watching it now. Cause it's like that whole moment was just kind of stupid, you know, but um, I don't know. I just felt like, you know, kind of the, maybe the beginning of Orioles Yankee rivalry, you know? Um, and, um, you know, we I mean, didn't mind going in our favor, you know, we kind of hoped that it would fire us up, but had the same woes and Tuesday had, this, I mean, Saturday and then kind of had the same woes on Sunday, you know? So I don't know, like what, what is your take on this whole Yankees, you know, Orioles beef before we get into the series, you know, because obviously this is one of the bigger talking points between the Orioles and Yankees this season. I think it's I, I like it a lot. You know, I think it's what, you know, the division needs and what baseball needs as a whole. You know, we need it to be, you know, fiery type of robberies again, you know, that really bring out the best in both teams when they play each other, because the Orioles and the Yankees, you know, in the standings race so far have been neck and neck. You know, both teams have been kind of been kind of mediocre, you know, the past couple months. You know, I'm not going to lie. And, you know, but just the just the past few weeks, I wouldn't say months. Well, it, they we have been kind of trash the past month, but, um, you know, the Yankees, too. So we've kind of been both teams kind of been struggling. You know, you can't deny that. But overall, I feel like this kind of rivalry is what baseball needs. And, and I like it a lot, you know, and maybe it was just kind of for that, you know, for that one game, because we were kind of going through a law, like how you said, but. Overall, I like it a lot. You know, I think baseball and sports in general need some type of fire and spice to it. Not a counterpoint in saying that it's cool and all, but like if players are getting hit and injured, I mean, when do you draw the line? The sport. Huh? That's what comes with the sport, man. It happens in baseball. No, no I'm not saying basketball. like, obviously, you know, 
I'm playing when like if your player gets hit by a ball, you know, like a hit by a pitch, whatever, that's one thing. But if it's on purpose, that's a whole different thing. Because now we're talking about players getting possibly hit in the head. That shouldn't come with the sport. You know, that that's just I think that's cheap. You know, because I wouldn't see, you know, Adley or Hyde or McCann, whatever, saying like, oh, we're going to draw Aaron Judge in the head. Now I can't see the same for the other side. You know, but we – obviously rivalries are fun and they're cool and all. But, like, when you're talking about, you know, players getting hurt, like purposely, not like by accident. Like it's one thing it's by accident. But they are talking about, you know, deliberately throwing 90-something miles an hour at someone's head. That's when it's just like it's gotten too far, in my opinion. You know, so – I mean, like I said, it's one thing chirping and yelling or, you know, benches clearing or whatever, you know, and, you know, just back and forth, bat flips on home runs or whatever, or taking your time to get the first place, you know, screaming your freaking heart out when you strike out Aaron Judge. I don't know what it is. That's cool. You know, the rivalry is fun. You know, it's it's Ed, you know, it's freaking neck and neck, like you said, division wise. But when you're talking about throwing that guys, I mean, these can, those people can kill somebody, you know, so like. That's when it's like getting a little ridiculous, you know, because like I said, I don't think the Orioles are in that business to throw in that guys. But like I said, I can't speak for the other clubhouse over there, you know, the Yankees clubhouse. So, like, I agree with what you said that it's good for baseball. But like, like I said, but when it gets to that point, it's like that's just getting ridiculous, you know, because I mean, the Kirsten that got put in the IL after that, you know, because of concussion systems like that's not good for baseball. You know, that type of pettiness, you know, that's true. I mean, what do you think? I mean, you know, of course, it's not good for baseball. It's not good, you know, for both teams having, you know, players get, you know, their lives in danger. I mean, we saw what happened to Alex Cobb and other pitchers like that. Oh, hold on, bro. How would you bring him up, you fucking idiot? I said, all right, all right. You know, of course, it's not good for baseball. You know, we saw what happened to other players who's gotten hit. But um, yeah. again, you know, that's how I just see it, you know, the good and the bad, you know, teams, there have been, in the past, teams have intentionally hit players, so that's just, in my opinion, how I see it, you know, the good and the bad comes with a rivalry, um, you know, you can say the same for this, if it turns out to be that way, you know, but we'll see in the future, so, yeah, that's just how I see it. I guess hitting players, like, where it won't, like, permanently hurt them is fine, you know, it, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, like, that's fine, that's kind of bushly, you know, but like, oh, you hit him on the thigh or whatever, you know, you leave a bruise on him. But, like, when you're talking about 90 to the head, like I said, that can really, really hurt somebody. Like, that can like, damage someone's career, honestly, you know, because I mean, we've seen what concussions can do to somebody, you know, especially oh, yeah. in baseball, you know. I mean, Brian Roberts is one of the, you know, one of the biggest examples, you know, with him getting a concussion, he never was the same afterwards, you know. So, I mean, the Mateo, you know, he got bonked on the head by Mullins earlier in the year. He wasn't been the same, you know, and that was just him getting hit on the head by a bat. You know, so anyways, let's just kind of go into the series here, you know, stop yapping about the the, the probably no beef between the two teams later when, when they play later in the year. So can you see my screen? Yep. All right. So like I said, um, as I mentioned, the Orioles lose the first game four to one. Um, let's see. Trevino doubles to left to make it one nothing Yankees. Jones singles to make it two nothing. Arias triples to make it two one, but Judge Homers to make it three one. Soto singles to right in the ninth to make it four one. Kind of when all the beef happened. Um, top hitters in the day. Um, you know, honestly, it really only Arias, I guess, going one for three with an RBI. You know, Arias gets the triple his first of the year. He gets an RBI his 12th of the year. Um, we left seven on base and had one for nine of runs to scoring position. So that's another issue. You know, we got to talk about, you know, K. Povich uh, makes his last start before getting sent down. Um, he gets a loss. He goes five and one third, five hits, three runs, three earned runs, five walks, and six strikeouts. Uh, Bert Smith goes in one one third innings, zeros across the board with two strikeouts. Keegan Aiken goes two thirds of an inning, zeros across the board with one strikeout. Brian Baker goes one and one third, one hit, one run, one earn run, one walk, and one strikeout. And Cena Perez finishes the job one one third of an inning, one hit, no runs, no earn runs, one walk, and strikeout. So, just another one of those lull games for the Orioles. You know, just kind of you know, just not getting runners in them. You know, when they need to. I mean, one for nine runners to score in position. I feel like they had the leadoff man almost in every inning, whether it was due to a walk or a hit or whatever, but like they just couldn't get him in, you know, and it was just poor situational hitting, you know, as, as, um, I don't know, kind of give me a reaction to game one of the series, you know, as again, the offense just continues to struggle. Um, you know, I think the runners and scoring session being one for nine is just 
a perfect kind of representation of this game, you know, and and even Cade Povich, uh, you know, he, you know, going into the series, you know, he was kind of struggling a lot. I think this game was just a perfect storm of everything that kind of is stalling the Orioles, you know, coming to the series, you know, coming to light. You know, you have inconsistent pitching. You got guys like Povich and then even Brian Baker. He is a guy that I would be wanting to have off this team. I'm not going to lie. You know, just inconsistent pitching. You know, these guys, sometimes their command is all over the place. Sometimes, you know. Yeah, if I was. Yep. They're, they're walking guys, you know, allowing the other team to have easy, you know, scoring positions and on base. Right. So, you know, you just give them opportunities like that and they're actually cashing them in. You know, three for eleven, it's not great, but they cash three they cash three runners in. We only right. did one out of nine. That's pathetic. And you expect to win against the Yankees and you know the season series, you know, you can't. So the perfect marriage of what our laws have been caused by happened in this game. And then this is what happens. You lose by three runs at home. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I the one thing I will say is, you know, like outside of maybe the five walks. I don't think it was like a like absolutely awful outing. You know, obviously three runs isn't like ideal, but that still gives you a chance to win. But the Orioles had the chances and they didn't take them. You know, that's the issue here is like the offense. I mean, runners are going to position. How many times have me and you talked about this in the videos saying it's one for nine, one for 10, oh for whatever. Like I think we have to mention this every video. And how many times that I say is it's not a problem now because we won because we hit three or four home runs. But now we're not hitting home runs. Runners aren't scoring because we can't drive them in. And I it mentioned it's going to not be a problem until it's going to be a problem, <laughs> you know, which is now, which is these losing streaks, you know. So very, very frustrating offensively lately, you know, especially in July. And it doesn't get any better. I mean, this is we're filming this later in the month. So, I mean, it doesn't get any better after that. So, you know, after the shenanigans that happened on Friday, you kind of hope the Orioles would come out fired up, but nope, they don't. They actually go down four nothing in the first inning after Torres reaches on an infield single and Wells hits a three run shot. Uh, we get one back in the fourth. Mountcastle grounds to shortstop to make it four to one, but then Soto homers and then Judge homers to make it five and six to one. Our top hitters in the day. Um, I mean, I guess Cowser he goes two for four. Um, Mountcastle goes one for four with an RBI, but again, just like not a lot of guys producing here. You know. O'Hearn gets a triple, his second on the year. Mountcastle gets an RBI, his 43rd. We left six on base from 0 for 5, runners to scoring position. So, again, Orioles not cashing in opportunities. Anyways, Rodriguez goes five innings, eight hits, six runs, six earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts, and three home runs given up. So, just not a great outing from Rodriguez. He gets the loss. He's 11 and 4 on the year. Jake Webb goes two thirds of an inning, no hits, no runs, no earned runs, one walk, and no strikeouts. Keegan Aiken goes one and one third, uh, one hit, no runs, no earned runs, one walk, and three strikeouts. And oh, I think it's like Vinny Tolley or something like that. I forgot his first name, but he goes two innings, one hit, no runs, no earned runs, no walks, and two strikeouts. It's a good outing for him in the Orioles debut. I mean, Grayson didn't pitch good at all. You know, I mean, with the eight, six runs given up, you know. Didn't seem to have a put away pitch. Got got to oh, got to two strikes a lot, but just couldn't put the guys away. And that allowed for you know the Yankees to get in the count or whatever and get the hitter get get into a hitter's count. You know, so I mean, kind of giving your action in game two is you know you kind of hope the Orioles came out fired up, but they only come out and score a measly one run again. Um, you know, it was disappointing, and it's kind of similar to game one. You know, uh, the only difference is that, you know the Yankees scored two more runs. Right. Um, you know, you have. Again, inconsistent and bad pitching from the starter. Uh, we're 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. That's that's like a big problem. For one, we didn't even give ourselves a lot of scoring opportunities. We only gave ourselves five scoring opportunities. Couldn't at least get one of those. Mm. Um, you know, the Yankees, again, they, they themselves didn't do that good, but they at least did enough to score, you know, two of those opportunities. So, I mean, our bats are just really just – not there. Right. And it sucks to lose like this at home. You know, as of this game, we were 29 and 22 at home. That's unacceptable in my eyes. Yeah. And you're seven games from being 500 at home. You know, it, it shouldn't be like that. And, you know, only scoring two runs combined total um, in the series, you know, as far um, at the second game mark, it's, it's just bad, man. It's bad. Yeah. It really is. And I don't know. Our hitting coaches need to be in question. 
our pitching coaches need to be in question. Not maybe the whole coaching staff needs to be in question because mm. it's just pathetic. Yeah, you know, um, incredibly frustrating. I mean, that's the problem with having a boomer bust team is that when it's bad, it's like really rough to watch, you know. So, um, I don't know, just incredibly frustrating game, uh, frustrating game to be at as I was. Um, so thanks for wasting my time over it. <laughs> but anyways, Sunday's game a little bit better. Um, as we win six to five, um. A little bit of an exciting win, kind of like that old flashback of to like last year's and 2022's team. I don't know why they freaking why is ESPN showing me this? <laughs> <laughs> what is ESPN trying to tell me to lose weight? Like <laughs> anyways, um the Yankees get the scoring early in the second inning. Grisham singles to right to make it one nothing Orioles. Henderson hits a two run shot. McCann scores, make it two to one. Grisham had the game of his life, apparently. He hits a home run to make it 2-2 two two Orioles, uh, tie the game at 2. Uh, Santander hits a bomb to right field to make it 3-2. to two. It's 3-2 to two for most of the game until uh, Rice hits a three-run shot off Craig Kimball to make it 5-3. The ma- mounting ground to a fielder's choice, which Volpe bobbled to make it 5-4, and then Mullins doubles, <laughs> doubles to left to score his two that walks off the game as Verdugo doesn't know how to field in left field, apparently. Um, and Yankees fans are very happy about that. Um, so... We win this game six to five. Our, our top hitters in the day, um, Henderson goes one for five with two RBIs, a home run, and a run scored, but does strike out three times. Mountcast, I mean, I'm sorry, Santander goes two for four with an RBI, a home run, and a run scored. Mullins gets his one pinch in opportunity. He goes one for one with two RBIs. Um, Mateo goes two for three. He has a good day. Um, Stowers comes in pinch hit, goes one for one. So good, good, good on the Orioles um, for pulling this one out, you know, even though they should have had it, even though Kimber almost blew it. Um, but anyways, Mullins doubles to center. Um, Mullins gets a double, his 10th in the year. Santander gets a triple, his second of the year. Santander hits a home run, his 24th. Henderson hits his 28th in the year, right before the home run derby. Mountcastle gets his 43rd RBI. Mullins gets his 30 and 31st. Santander gets his 58th. And, and Henderson gets his 62nd and 63rd. Left eight on base, one for eight runners in scoring position. Luckily, that one was the game that that one was the uh, the game winning run. So again, cannot cash in opportunities. Annoying. Um, but anyways, Dean Kramer goes four and two thirds, four hits, two runs, two earned runs, two walks, four strikeouts, and a home run given up. Jacob Webb goes to inning zeros across the board with one walk and a strikeout. Cena Perez goes to inning one hit, no runs, no earned runs, and two strikeouts. Yenya Cano goes one and one third, one hit, no runs, no earned runs, one walk, and no strikeouts. Craig Kimbrell gets the win. He's six and two, but he also gets his fifth blown save. Um, he goes in inning one hit, three runs, three earned runs, two walks, one strikeout, and a home run given up. So um Kimbrell did his best job to lose it. Unfortunately, gets the win in the process. So kind of give me a reaction to game three and the final game of the first half. Um, I thought you were gonna say some more there. <laughs> I wanted um, but, to, but um, I like I had like a brain fart, so I was just like, hopefully you just start talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, um, you know, this game was important. You know, I'm glad that we didn't get swept. You know, again, there's the issue of the runners in scoring position. Um, you know, it's seeming like this is just gonna be an issue that we're gonna have to work past. You know, hopefully by hitting home runs, hopefully by getting you know lucky hits like how Mullins did, and that and that's not to take away from you know, what he did, but it was a lucky hit, honestly. You know, I feel like nine times out of ten, you know, Verdugo, if he plays that right, you know, that's the end of the game, you know. and You're right about way, that, too. It was 99% yeah. catch probability. Yeah, and, and, and in a way, you kind of got to feel, I don't know, you, you can feel good about the win, but you can't really feel that good about the win because we, we really should have lost this game. I mean, we gave them the game away, so right. I'm glad that we won. I'm glad that we avoided the sweep, but – Got to you. You got to get better at runners in scoring position. That is the biggest thing for this team, and in closing and pitching as well. And you know we're not going to win World Series. We're not going to be able to beat teams like the Phillies, the Yankees, the Guardians without that. So right. Hopefully we fix that after the uh, All Star break, or absolutely we fix that after All Star break. Right. Well, I mean, spoiler alert: we kind of didn't. So I mean, that's never fun. <laughs> um, but um, you know, very irritating series you know i will say you know because you want the orals to come out firing you know after what happened that friday night but in fact they come out you know firing outs i guess you know that's the easiest way to say it you know and i don't know the orals just kind of look flat you know 
I know it's really hard to really decipher what's going on besides, you know, it just seems more than just like players being restless. I mean, players being tired or fatigued or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like it just, it feels like something's off. I can't pinpoint what, and we're in the late stages of July right now. We're past the also breaking everything. And something still feels wrong. Like I can't pinpoint what, but I guess we're just going to really have to decipher that, you know, when we get into the later series, um, you know, as you know, we've made some trades in the process as well. Got some pitchers, let go of somebody. We'll get into that when you know we get to those series, or whatever. But there's still something off with the Orioles, and it's just I don't know if it's because we're playing NL teams and we just can't play NL teams for some reason, which is unfortunate since that's who we got to play in the World Series if we make it. So I don't know. Like we'll, we'll kind of get into that in later videos or whatever, you know, and then talk about guys who need to step up, guys who probably need to be traded, all that stuff, you know. So. But anyways, that'll be our breakdown of the Orioles versus Yankees series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Share on TikTok, Instagram, wherever you can. All our social media links will be down in the description below. Don't forget to check out our second channel, Casual Cinema, where we review movies from our casual perspective. Um, we're going to have a few uh, movie reviews coming out there as me and TJ went to the movies last week, saw two movies, Twisters and Deadpool 3. So finally getting some new content on there as we never really do. <laughs> so you know, he see TJ's happy about it. He's excited. Eat some churros. Um, <laughs> I, was doing anyway. the, I was doing the, uh, the Rick Ross. Oh, you reminded me of that Charles Barkley video when he was like eating the churros. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyways um so yeah don't forget, like i said don't forget to like subscribe and share um also don't check don't forget, don't forget to check out our twitter where we do <laughs> live game updates as i like combine all the words together <laughs> um don't forget to check out our tiktok as well as you know we post like in-game clips or whatever and also our instagram where we post lineup and final posts for the orioles and ravens and uh we're birds for sports and we're out well